Although there are several definitions of energy in dictionaries and technical explanations in physics textbooks, at its core, energy is the ability to affect change. An arrow resting on a hunter's tight bowstring has a lot of potential energy. When the bowstring is let go, an arrow is fired into the air at high speed. Kinetic energy is a type of moving energy that may also cause change, such as when an arrow strikes its intended target and provides food for the hunter's family for the day. In our universe, energy is present everywhere. In fact, everything we observe can be thought of as an endless dance of energy, in which the energy constantly shifts forms. We live in a chaotic environment because energy is continually moving through both objects and people. How about negative energy? When discussing the creation of wormholes, space tunnels through which people can immediately travel, or warp drive engines that will enable humans to move across space faster than the speed of light, negative energy is frequently brought up. But is it true? Energy is positive in the realm of kinetic energy. But with stored, potential, energy, that's not necessarily the case. Consider a large rock located on the edge of a very high cliff. If someone pushes the rock over the edge, you know what will happen. It will fall to the ground with increasing speed, producing a loud noise when it lands, and maybe shattering apart. The potential energy of the rock at the cliff's top will be converted into kinetic energy, when the rock, which is heavy and falling quickly, crashes against the bottom. Potential energy is transformed into kinetic energy in terms of physics. Imagine two persons now, one at the base of the cliff and the other at the top, both looking at that rock. Although they both observe the same event, they describe the rock before it falls in different ways. The person at the bottom of the cliff perceives the area around them as having zero potential energy. After all, they are standing on the ground. To this person, an object on the ground next to them also has zero potential energy, but the rock high above them on the cliff has a lot of positive potential energy. The person at the top of the cliff has a different perspective. Like the person at the bottom of the cliff, they would insist that their potential energy is zero. After the rock has fallen to the bottom of the cliff, the person at the top would say that it has much less energy than it did when it was at the top. Thus, this person would conclude that the rock had zero potential energy at the top of the cliff, but negative potential energy at the bottom. From a third-person perspective, we can see that the two observers both agree that the rock had more potential energy at the top of the cliff and less at the bottom. The difference is that the top observer says that the rock had negative potential energy when it hit the ground, while the bottom observer said the rock never had negative energy. This underscores the idea that the numerical value for potential energy is arbitrary, and only differences matter. Wormholes and Warp Drives While researching black holes in 1935, Albert Einstein and his student Nathan Rosen came to the conclusion that there could be mathematical ways to connect two black holes through a wormhole. Theoretically, items might go via the wormhole with little to no delay. The only issue is that they required negative energy to make it all function in order for the wormhole to be stable, which means that it doesn't collapse. In a paper published in 1994, theoretical physicist Miguel Alcabier hypothesized a kind of warp drive that bent space in front of and behind an object, reducing the space in front and stretching it behind. This drive is now known as an Alcabier drive. However, his plan once more required negative energy. Gravitational forces created by the bulk of nearby objects, electromagnetic fields from stars and other light-emitting objects, and even quantum jitters of subatomic particles flickering in and out of existence, are all present in empty space. They are referred to as virtual particles. Space is filled with energy from these fields. The virtual particles remain even when gravity and electromagnetic sources are taken away. Space is energetic. Negative energy in this sense refers to having less energy than empty space. Things get challenging at that point. Nobody is aware of a way to have less energy than nothing. We could take advantage of that energy gap and have unbounded power if we understood how. This concept is known as zero-point energy. Scientists think about a type of mass dubbed negative mass in the context of wormholes or warp engines that would produce negative gravity and consequently negative energy. However, this is an entirely hypothetical construct that has never been observed. 
On a more specific note, you might have noticed a recent article, in which scientists claim to have created a quantum equivalent of a wormhole. Although the stories are accurate, this was a computational analog rather than a real wormhole. In the simulation, the negative energy wasn't actually negative energy. Although it does exist, negative energy is a hazy idea. People can classify circumstances as having negative energy, just like in our cliff example, but that's not the same as the intriguing and intriguing possibilities around wormholes and warp engines. For those, you need to figure out a means to lower space's overall energy below the minimum, but we don't know how to accomplish it. It's possible that it's impossible, which it probably is. <laughs>